What makes someone a villain? Fate? Chance? Circumstance? One really bad day? Or is it simply a matter of point of view? Some would argue it all comes down to choices. Good? Bad? Something in between? But what if you have no choice? What if everything you experienced in your life all went back to a choice someone else made? You would probably want what is due to you or possibly even revenge of some kind. But in seeking what you feel is justice, do you then become a villain while seeing yourself as the hero of your own story? Or maybe you're just a child that's in a lot of pain. These can certainly be said, a meteor a butterfly, aka Miss Hannes, which is why she is such a great villain. That's why we're spotlighting her in this character retrospective. When we first met Miss Hannes, she gave the impression of a bitter old woman who thought her way was the only way. This was only further emphasized by the brilliant casting of Jessica Walter for her voice, an actress known for playing characters of a similar nature, such as Mallory Archer from Archer and Lucille Bluth in Arrested Development. You younger viewers may want to wait a few years before you watch those shows, but trust us, this was perfect casting, which made the revelation of her past as Meteora all the more impactful. Hearing this voice that was always angry, bitter, and insulting speak of remembering her dolls, her toy chest, her baby bed, and her past as Meteor was just transformative. This character who we initially disliked to say the least, suddenly had a past where she was just a baby who had her family taken away from her. Later we would come to learn more about how she was raised, subject to the same brainwashing she would subjected other princesses to. Considering all this, it makes Miss Heinous slash Meteora a character that would deserve our sympathy instead of our hatred. There is also the relationship between Meteora and Star to consider. Although Miss Heinous, or Meteora as you will, was more of an enemy to Marco, symbolically speaking, it was inevitable in a way that she and Star would clash. From the show's beginning, Star feared St. Olga's and subsequently everything it represented. Have it to give up being herself to become queen and take on all the responsibilities associated with it. Miss Hannes represents the St. Olga's ideology, if you will. Meteor is then the opposite of Star, as she wants the throne and Star does not really want to become queen. Due to Moon's absence, Star is to become acting queen. Emphasis on the acting part. And in effect, means the destiny she tried to avoid. This theme is reflected in other relationships as well. It would seem that the Magic High Commission sought to initially avoid the situation by switching Meteora with Festivia, but in effect caused what they feared to happen, if not worse than they imagined. Ironically, Meteora in a way represents what Star herself tried to create, and in effect, a dream became a nightmare. And being half monster and half human, Meteora represents the society that Star tried to create. Star then is fighting both Meteora and what is symbolically her own aspirations for a more unified Muni. However, that's not to be discouraged or seen as impossible. After all, Meteora was reverted back to an infant, symb symbolizing a new change. Let's also remember that the Meteor from before was a byproduct of wanting to keep humans and monsters separate, while Star is seeking to bring them together. In a way, Meteor represents what you might call old wounds and the desire for vengeance of the oppressed. While her actions would affect maybe a few people responsible for her pain, but hurting more innocent people in the process, possibly even those who would support monsters and humans living together, and in essence, Meteor herself. I think a lot of us were crying alongside Eclipse that when it seemed that Meteor was destroyed. Just like I think our hearts all soared when it turned out that she had been reverted to a baby. This gave them both a second chance to be a family, with dear old dad just waiting to be released in season 4. But what does this mean for Meteor's potential as a future villain? Well, one thing that has been prevalent in many cartoons of recent years is the idea of villains redeeming themselves or changing their ways and finding forgiveness for those they've wronged. Think about it. Starlight Glimmer of My Little Pony, Lil Gideon from Gaudi Falls, Peridot from Siva Universe, the Ice King from Adventure Time, and even Buffrog. Bluto is even showing signs of redemption by taking out Toffee. But it's hard to say where he's going with his recent efforts. The same could happen to Meteora. I mean, reverting to a baby is kind of the ultimate do-over. 
She also has her parents that are for her now, and hopefully Globgore is not as scary as he looks. What I think will be interesting is how Star Marco will interact with her, and how their influence could affect her. Will stories of Princess Marco Turdina in fact prove to be a positive effect on Baby Meteora? Could Star be a positive influence? It certainly seems possible, but feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, I can't find it awfully coincidental that the meteor averts to a baby just as Mrs. Diaz is about to have one. I fear what I may have unleashed, so <laughs> let's keep the shipping drama down to a minimum in this case, please. Either way, I think Meteor's time as a villain may be over. But she has achieved something that is arguably the greatest achievement a villain can achieve outside of their goal. The chance to start over and not become a villain. Perhaps even a hero. But what do you think? Do you hope Meteor will return to how she was? Or do you want to see her fight alongside Star Marco? Share your thoughts in the comments down below! Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and check out the Star vs. the Force of Evil Amino group for more content and con connect with other fans. We will get through this hiatus together.